now. Okay, we're going to talk about sky streaks and how to soup them up a little bit, get them to work better than they uh, ordinarily do. First, you want to always cut the bag open because if you let the kids tear it, they'll tear the bag and they'll tear this wing. All right, the instructions, as always, go in the trash. Start with the wing. You need the fuselage, the hook is on the bottom, so you need to gently but firmly force the wing through the fuselage. If you do that, to it correctly, you'll see the slot for the pilot and the slot for the rudder on the top. Now, the way this comes out with the wing flat, it will give very, very poor performance. So we need to soup it up by adding a little polyhedral. So we need to mark on the bottom of the wing about that far. It's not critical how far, and you can use a ruler or you can just freehand. It doesn't even have to be even. It doesn't have to be exactly even. And it's not that you want the line drawn, it's that you want the, the wood crushed just a little bit. Then, you can crack that wing up like that, and all of a sudden you've got polyhedral in it. And you take some CA and run a little bead of it down like that, and then use your accelerator, your spritz, or in this case out of a drip bottle, and it holds it steady. Now the rest goes together pretty fast. Elevator breaks out and goes in. The rudder has the stripes printed the wrong direction for the grain of the wood. It's really hard, but you have to make sure that the stripes go up and down. Otherwise, the thing will break right off because the wood's going the wrong way. And if you're worried about that point, you can stick it off. It's a good idea to just put a little dot of glue to hold those tail surfaces in place, but you don't want to glue the wing in place because you're going to use that to trim the model. All right? The pilot can go on there, but I think it flies better without. And you tell the kid, you're the pilot now. You don't need him. <laughs> on goes the rudder, or the, the uh, nose assembly. Some of these shift quite a bit. You can see this is one of them that happens to shift quite a bit. So you take a little scrap of wood, about like that, and on the right-hand side, you want to cram that in to shim it out a little bit. And then you can break off the excess if you want. And now it'll hold adjustment. All right. This motor that comes with this blue one is dismal. It's really great for wrapping around things for storage, but it's not very good for flying airplanes. So you want to go with a tan motor. A 1 8 inch tan motor will finger wind just right, and the kid can wind it up himself. A 3 32nd motor, stretch wound, will put this thing into orbit. You can get a long flight, but this hand winding of a 1 8 inch motor will really do the trick. And for the initial test flight, you're going to put the wing about in the middle of that slot, and if it turns one way or the other or dives in, angle the wing to correct it like that. I know it looks silly, but it's very effective. Angling that wing will, will keep it from diving in. And as I'm doing this, I'm kind of looking, and the wing looks just a little warped, so I'm going to compensate just a little bit like that. And the kids say, how much to wind? Well, you wind until just before it breaks. But actually, you see these rows of knots? You can one, fill it with one row of knots, and it's a good test flight. You can fill it with two rows of knots, and it's a good regular flight, and three rows of knots is a broken motor. So we're going to go just a little bit beyond one row of knots, and then I'm going to have my camera operator turn around, and we're going to give this a test flight and see if it goes. I'm going to fly it that way. Here's the action moment. Oh. Oh. And that's how to soup up a sky streak.